Hello everyone, I'm back. I'm glad that I am. I'm sorry it took so long for me to come back. Um, but I had to upload that video. Didn't even think about that. I thought, oh, well, I'll just come right back. <laughs> but that didn't happen. So I had to wait for it to upload before I could do another video. I really need to know how to pause my video. Because then I could have just moved everything aside and then continued, you know, if that makes sense, I think, if that would work. No, I suppose it would have probably been just as long. I don't know. Anyway, here we are and here you are. You still having a good day? I hope so. I um, was able to finish up, well, the drive. Where did it go? See guys? Already? Oh no, it's right here. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't stitched it. But I did want to show you that I did take my white eraser, which is right here. I have several. I always keep a white eraser on hand. And um, I got all the glue off except right here so, so I could show you. So you just... Um, go along here and I have a lot I was surprised when it dried how much I saw you know the, um, from the glue stick but this will even take off um, Fabri-Tac it will take off any kind of glue and then you won't have to worry about it being shiny and remember this is on a really really light weight paper so um yeah see it's gone all gone so there's no glue and I had quite a bit from the glue stick but the good thing is is I went around and checked all the edges you know how sometimes when you collage you have to well there's an edge so um I'm just going to take my Fabri-Tac but I went around all these edges. I missed one. And I just um, looked to see if any of the edges lifted up. And none of them did, which I found really odd. I mean, I know that I got a lot of glue on that, but so tracing paper, if I ever say tissue paper in my videos, I was watching a video the other day, I kept calling it tissue paper. If I ever say tissue paper, I mean tracing paper, unless I do a video using tissue paper, I'll say that at the very beginning, that it is tissue paper, because I do use tissue paper a lot, um, and I use the backs of napkins a lot, but um, I haven't in any of these videos, I don't believe, so, um, or the re most recent videos that I've been doing as I've been working on this project. So, um, but, oh, she's so darling, and um, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to stitch it or not. I'll have to look at it some more. But um, anyway, it's all dry. It folds real well. I placed it in my journal where I think I want it, and it looks fabulous. It really does. I may, um, if I stitch it, what I would do is I would print another letter or not. What I'm thinking, here's my thought. I thought that I would take one of the yellow sheets and just place it over this so that the person could have writing. And then perhaps maybe just put like uh, some birds or something on this page. So let me know what you think in the comments. I think that might be fun. And I wish... I was going to bring out this paper. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Let me show it to you real quick. So you know what I'm talking about. No, it's not that. Okay. I'm sorry. If it was right beside me, I'd get it. But I already put it in the closet with my back stock. So, and I'm not going to get up and get it. I thought it was right there. But that, I just got a TMU order. TMU had um, contacted me through an email that I just saw yesterday 
um, I have been purchasing items from them for my storage, as you know. And I've loved everything that they've sent me. I think it's very good quality. And um, let me get my things ready so that we don't spoil while I'm talking. I think it's very good quality, all the storage items I've gotten so far. And I've also gotten from them some paper clips. But as far as crafting items, I haven't really gotten anything because um, I really wasn't... I didn't even know about the quality or anything like that. And I've seen people do unboxings. But, you know, some people's idea of it being really good quality might not be your idea of good quality. So, I haven't responded to them yet. What I did was I placed a small order because I had a, I had a coupon. Um, what happens is, is if they don't send your item the day that you order it, they give you a $5 credit. And um, I didn't know that. So when I placed this order, which I placed by myself, I did not take them up on their offer yet. But what I did was I placed a small order so that I could do an honest review of things that I personally purchased so that, you know, it, you would know whether or not it was really what I believed it would be. Um, whether it would be a great buy or, um, you know, everybody's doing team U hauls. Everybody's on the Team U bandwagon. I've been ordering from Team U since February, <laughs> since I started doing my reorganization. It could even be January, I'm not sure. Um, they're a Boston-based company. I used to live in Boston. They are a Chinese holding company, just like Wish or, you know, one of those other companies. But your shipping is a lot sooner because it either comes from well, all of mine have come from Massachusetts, from the Boston-based co company. However, they do have one in Canada. And I know that some people have been getting their orders from Canada. So I think it depends on where you live. I'm not sure. Anyway, I got my order. And um, I haven't opened it yet. Well, I opened it and, and just looked at the looked what was in the package. And I will do, I will let you know in the next video about that. And when I just looked down, I thought that that was the paper, but it isn't. So, anyway, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to highlight. I showed you the other day how to age. Now I'm going to show you how to highlight these two photos. They're swans, and I got them from Graphic Fairies. And um, I didn't do a very good job cutting that, but it's okay. Actually, I think I might... Just kind of rough this up a little bit because I I did I just noticed I did that on the top and I actually found these in my um in my nature um I keep boxes if you're new here I keep all of my um anything that I haven't used in a project I keep in separate boxes. So I have a, you know, an inspiration box for Christmas, an inspiration box for um, summer, spring, fall, winter, and then I have boxes for, um, I know in this small space you would think, where do you keep them all? But I have them on a shelf because I use my walls. But anyway, because my whole, my whole craft room is, is shelving. If any of you have seen it, I posted a reel on Facebook. I'll try and do a walkthrough because I met a new girl. Um, and um, she said a walkthrough would be very helpful for her. So in, in organizing on it, you know, I did I did a very short video on a um, some organization things for your desk. So I sent her that video and... Um, so I, I'll do a video, a walkthrough, but so that you can see where I keep things. Anyway, these happen to have been in my nature um, 
folio, like plastic folio that I keep in my filing cabinet. And I went through it and I found them and I was so excited because one, I love swans and two, I just, I don't know. This is something about swans that are just... Now, <laughs> let me back up a little bit. They're beautiful. Without a doubt, they are absolutely gorgeous. However, here in Orlando, well, not here in Punta Gorda, but in Florida, in Orlando, we have a park. It's a beautiful park. And there are a ton of swans. And um, they're not happy swans. <laughs> You can't get too close. Yeah. Especially during, you know, when they're protecting their babies. I have so many photos of their nests and their babies and their eggs. But um, anyway, I, I'd have to go very deep into my photos. Like, I've been here for three years now. So, and I know that Ella, my granddaughter, Ella Ray is um seven so it would be about seven years ago so they may even be on my old computer that i dropped which is right now with someone who is trying to retrieve my files which is great because there's a lot of files i didn't back up because i got well to be honest i'd rather be creating but i'm being more proactive in backing everything up on my um, external drive. Okay, here we go. So I've kind of just lightly, this one is already backed. That one is not, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be backing them anyway. But I'm not going to age them with anything. I'm just going to highlight them with some, this is the brilliant, this is the gloss. Um, matte medium or you could use gloss Mod Podge like I said it doesn't dry here and for this I use a very you know more narrow brush than I did yesterday yesterday I used this brush because I was doing the whole photo whereas this one I'm just highlighting some things now you'll see the difference in a minute when I um, get my postcards from France um, or Belgium or wherever. Um, Marguerite had sent me some from Portugal, beautiful ones. Um, so I scan them and they come out and of course they, they, they're on paper so they look different but once you highlight them they look just like the postcard. So I'm just gonna highlight this rose Oh, let me look. Let me show you. That's the before. I moved my camera up so that I'm not out of focus. I mean, not out of focus, so that you can see more of what I'm doing and I don't pull things out of, out of frame is what I meant. I don't think I'm ever out of focus. If I am, please let me know because um, I have a special... Uh, thing and see I'm just dabbing it I'm not really brushing it I'm just kind of dabbing that and I'm not like brushing it like you would just dabbing it because I don't want any brush strokes and I don't want to go outside those lines at all and then you're gonna have a little bit of red maybe on your brush so just you know, do that so that you don't have any red on there. And then get a little bit more and dab it on the green or whatever you want to highlight. Okay. And now I want to do the branch. It makes such a difference. To me, it does. And now I'm going to do the swan. Just make sure you don't have any color because sometimes it will pick up the color that's in the photo because this is not, this is just an inkjet. If it were a laser, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. But 
Wait till you see how it brings out the color in this. You'll be amazed. It dries really fast. Even my podge would dry fast on this because you're not adding a lot. I'm gonna actually just take it off the cover. Just making sure that I don't have any color on there because I don't want any color on there. Now I'm just gonna kind of go over this like this, matching the strokes that the artist who painted this did it. See how I'm stroking my brush like this, like the artist had done when the oil painting or, you know, the original oil painting probably was like this. Now, my father-in-law used to collect postcards and I have postcards of his that are paintings because they used to paint them. He is from um, Austria, so I have a lot of European postcards. And like I said, you know, he, he passed away when he was 87, but he'd be 107 now, so those postcards are pretty old. Now, again, I'm just gonna make sure that there's no color because I wanna highlight that sky a little bit. Not much. I've got about that much on my brush. And I'm just going to start over here and just kind of highlight that area. Maybe a little bit there. Not much. And then a little bit over here. Notice I turned my brush to get the other side because I don't want I didn't want to drag any color. I want the color to stay the way that it is. So it's pretty much like you're re-watercoloring your art, your, your digital, but you're not. You're only putting some, some decoupage or matte medium or whatever you choose to put on it to highlight that. Now let that dry and we'll do the next one. That's all I want to do for that one. Let me just make sure that there's no color on this. And this is just um, parchment paper. And this is actually from Timu, which I love. I am, I very much love this, very much so because it comes in 50 sheets and it was like $1.99. It comes in every color. So I want to take a little bit of this off because I only want to highlight these swans. Oh, here's the before. Just looks like paper, right? So this is really relaxing. Like I said, it's almost like watercoloring. So we're just kind of making some ephemera today. The last bit that I want to make for my journal. And I think I want to highlight some of these trees back here or perhaps some water. So, or do I want to do the water? I'm going over the um, swans one more time because there's so many of them and I might have missed some. Not sure if I want to do the water yet, but I definitely want to highlight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right here, there's some trees. There's a little, like, almost like a little island right here. Is this a patch of grass? They're in the water, probably in a lake someplace. And um, so, you know, there's a lot of kind of a forest back there. So I'm gonna highlight this area right here. Get a little out of here. Get a little bit off my brush. I don't wanna 
I don't want to do too much. Like I said, just the background here. And see, I'm just kind of dabbing. It's going to dry clear. And this little patch here, just to bring it out, you know, because the original photo would have probably had that a little bit more highlighted. As I look at my my father-in-law's postcards, and I should get those out so I can show you them. They're beautiful, especially the painted ones. But when I do print those, you can't tell that they're painted unless you do this. These are not his. Like I said, these are, I'm pretty sure these are graphic theories. Because if I owned these, I'd be printing them daily. Well, I'm a Graphic Fairies member, but um, I forgot that they had these. I don't even remember when I got them. I don't remember what journal I was working on and why I had so many swans. I have a lot, but I only chose these because I only needed a couple of little cards. And it is nature themed. And God really created some beautiful things when he created swans. <laughs> yeah, they are beauty. I remember Lydia had swans. I don't remember. I have to go back and look. It might just be a, um, I am going to do a little bit of this water here. Not much, just here and there. Oh well, my brush is pretty much dry right now, so I'm just kind of doing this. It's not really doing much, but I'm getting the rest of it off my brush and just going around it like this. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do. It's already dry, but it just makes such a difference. To me, it does. It just makes it, I don't know more appealing, gives a little bit of dimension instead of it just looking like a piece of paper. That's all we're gonna do. So, like I said yesterday, I have to get this off my brush because otherwise it will get ruined and it is one of my favorite watercolor brushes. So, just like this. This is hand sanitizer. For those of you that are new, I use it for everything. That way I have no water except for what's beside me and it's covered. Um, I have no water in my craft room. Well, I do in my water pens, excuse me, like these, these have water in them, but they're covered. And I only use them for, you know, sometimes water coloring or if I need a little bit of water for something I'll squeeze a little bit out it's all clean nice and soft now I'll take this I was gonna say now I'll take this and wipe my desk but I didn't use my desk I'll make sure that there's no residue on it anyway and then I'll just keep this this is the same paper towel that I use well, no, it's not. It's a new one. I was going to say that's the same paper towel. Now, what you want to do is I keep index cards. These are, you could put two together if you wanted to, but they're heavy enough. I keep them right beside me because they make perfect. Um, I do tea stain them, so I have tea stained ones and then I have white ones. So all I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to place this here, right? And now it's back. If I wanted it heavier, which I do not, I could glue two of these together, but they're pretty hefty. Um, 
I got them a long time ago at Staples and they're just the blank index cards because I paint on these a lot. Anytime I do watercolors or, I mean, um, acrylics and stuff, this is what I use. So that's what I'm gonna do and look at how pretty that is. I don't know if it shows up in the camera, um, but it's very, very, very pretty. It just made such a difference. And that's all you do. And the same with this one, I'll back it. And it even feels good too. It really does. It feels real. <laughs> it feels like a real postcard. So that's it. That's what it will look like. And then I'll add something to the back corner. Um, probably or a sentiment or a word um, to encourage the writer, maybe, perhaps. Or perhaps a date, I don't know. Lydia has so many beautiful sentiments and words, and I have them all, so I'll find something. But that's it for that. We'll put this aside now, because we're done, and we can, and we'll move on. And where are we? Really? 26 minutes? Gosh, I have just got to stop talking. Okay, I'll put these aside and we'll move on. We don't need this anymore. But I'll save it for the next time. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, my next item that I wanted to show you was this one which is very simple. I'm making a tall skinny journal. You'll do the same exact thing. I've done a video on this before, just thought I'd bring you along. I'm making a tall skinny journal, so I folded it this way and made sure that it was only, um, I think it's three and a half inches. I'm sorry, it's four and a quarter inches folded. So if you're making tall skinny, four and a half inches folded or as wide as you want it. You're going to fold this up this way. Oh, sorry. So it'll be opened. Mine happens to be double-sided because I had it double-sided. I didn't print anything else. I'm using my scraps. So I'm folding this up like this. Okay. So I folded it in half. I'm folding it up. Now I want to take something to make a band. And I was going to use the cutoff for that. But it's you're barely able to see it. Then I thought, well, I'll use book page. But then I still had some cutoffs from this. So I thought I'd use that. So I'm going to. So then all you're going to do is take this piece. You're going to wrap it around here. This is not my idea. It comes from Heather at Rose Hill Paper Cottage if you want to visit her. Or Roxy at Rachel Creations. She did her... Um, I've made so many of these. They're in every single one of my journals. Ever since Heather did them at Rose Hill Paper Cottage. So then you want to take your band... And you want to make sure it's tight enough, but loose enough to slide off, okay? So I make it really tight, and then when I glue it down, I'll loosen it up just enough so that it will slide off and on. Not too loose, because it will fall off, okay? So you just put your band around. Now, most people will use washi tape, so I'm going to. So I'm going to take a strip of Lydia's washi tape that I think will look pretty. And this is peach. This has birds on it, so I'm going to use this one. Because those tags are going to go in this. So all you do now, since it's on sticky paper, is choose which one you want. You know which part you want make sure it's right side up which is about there i 
I cannot wait to get my eyes fixed, gals. Or guys. Um, I'm going to take this piece, simply tear it, save that. Now I'm going to loosen it just a little bit so it slides on and off. And this again is one of from, you know, it, this is from Lydia's collection. I don't remember which one I have all over washi. Mm. It's so hard to remember it, all of them, but I'll, I'll always leave it in the description box below. I didn't leave the papers we worked with today in, in the description box before this one, but since we're using it again, I'll leave it. And then I'll look in my files and see where I got this. So I'm just going to put that right there. See, it makes a pretty band and this will slide on and off easily. I hope I didn't tape that to the card. No, but somehow there's glue or something there. No, there isn't. It slides off. It'll slide off. Just kind of do this. And it slides off. I'm not going to slide it off. So then what you do is kind of take this, fold it down. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, white. It really doesn't. Because a lot of mine are. And that's all you do. Now you can decorate it if you want or not. What I'm going to do is I am going to take, say, a postcard maybe if it will fit. Yes, it will. So I'm going to put a postcard there. And then once these are backed, I'm going to perhaps put this one here. And then I'll put this one in this pocket here. See, it's layering. It looks so pretty. And I'll, I'll probably put a few more in there. And then what I'll probably do, because it's me, you don't have to do this part. Um, I'll probably take um, some ribbon. Um, I have a piece right here because I was working with it earlier. I'm gonna take a piece of ribbon because I just want to. You don't have to, but you can. So I'm going to take a piece of ribbon and I'm going to add it to that band loosely. And I'm not going to tie a bow. I'm just going to tie a knot. And then when I'm done, you'll see what I'll do. So there's the bow. This is a last minute thing, by the way. I was just thinking, what else can I add that will give it a little bit more dimension without taking away from anything? So there's a bow. Okay. And of course, don't get rid of that. Seriously, you'll use it. And this is my ribbon from my friend Angela. It was a gift. Angela at um, Angela Kerr Design. She sells this on her website, not on not in her Etsy. But she sent me a ton of ribbons for a gift. So all I'm going to do is make sure that's nice and tight. And then I'm going to come back here. Oops. First, I'm going to make sure that's flat. Actually, you know what? I don't even have to do what I thought I was going to have to do. I think that's going to be fine. What I'm going to do is just put a dot of glue right here um, when I'm done to keep that ribbon here so that when you come on and off, you pull the whole thing. Make sense? I'm not going to do it right now because I have to fix the bow. I have to untie it and twist it in the back. Isn't that pretty? Then you can also add um, some paper for writing in here. And this 
will now slide right into a pocket in my journal. It could even be on the top of your journal, which I love. I love that look. I love all the layers. And I may add more, but for now, it's just going to be swans. Okay? So then the last thing, or maybe not, is what I thought I'd do, because I have so many, is I've never showed anybody this on video because I've never had an opportunity, but I've created a lot of slow stitching for this. And I thought before I do, I'll at least start and show you that you can do anything on paper. Now, all I did was take a scrap. I put this from, I, I just cut it out of some scrapbook paper that I have, these little round things. This is going to be an over the page with writing space. And I did, this is the embossed side and this is the debossed side. So you can write on this very easily. You could also attach paper inside here and make it a paper pad over the page. But that's not what we're, I mean, we've done these, so you know how to do them. So what I'm going to do real quick is show you how I do it. So this is just a little, little thing that I had made. And I know I have a needle that's threaded in here because always I keep a thread I keep a threaded needle. As, as soon as I'm done using it, I if I'm if I've finished using it, I'll rethread it. And typically with white. I mean I have other needles in here in the event that I want to use them, but I always keep something in here so that I'm not having to thread needles and all that. So now all I'm gonna do is I have a little piece of um, polka dotted tool and I have a piece of lace and all I'm going to do is go up through the paper and I'm going to bring you down a little bit for this so that you can see what I'm doing. You ready? Hold on. I hope that's not too close but close enough for you to see what I'm doing. I, yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to go up like this. I'm going to show you how easy this is. You do not have to be an expert sewer. But any kind of stitching, I wanted to show you that you can do, whether you have a machine or you don't. This is all you do. This is how I'm attaching it. This is called slow stitching or embroidery or just sewing. I'm going in. This is called a running stitch. So all you're doing is you're taking your thread and you're going up and you're making your stitch as long or as short as you want. And I'm going right through the paper with no problem. Now, I have made things <laughs> and it was very difficult to get through the paper because of the paper, because of the so many layers I was slow stitching. See how easy that is? And I could have used a different color, but I think that the lace and the, um, I think the lace and the tool, if I had used a color, your eye would have gone to the color. Now, in all honesty, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I probably should have used an accrued color thread. But it still looks good as you can see it. I like I like being able to see it, of course, so I guess you do want to use a contrasting color. So now I have a very, very bad eyesight. I've lost 75% of my vision. 
So, but I'm close enough and I do have on a special pair of magnifying glasses my doctor has made for me to be able to do this. But it's so simple. And to me, it really adds just a nice touch to your project. And it's just paper and a tiny bit of lace. And you know what? Um, I need to use my lace because it will rot if you don't. Literally, it will rot. So I'm using it. You better believe I am. I'll be selling it in my shop as well. And God willing, that will be up by the 30th of May. I've got one more commitment. Um, and then... I will be working on getting the rest of my things packaged because I am selling obviously more than journals. I'll be selling linens, laces, ephemera that I've, per I've already packaged, you know, made and packaged over the years. Now down here, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do a, a little French knot. And I'm not going to show you today how to do that because I'm not going to be doing it right. <laughs> you should have like a felt board or something underneath this when you do it. And um, I don't. So I'm just going to do a little French knot there just because it's so sweet and it, it really is pretty. You probably won't see it, but it's just like a little pretty knot right there. Then I'm going to take my thread going to go underneath that last stitch so that I can make sure that it's not going to come unstitched and then I'm going to go through this and pull it and then I'm going to take and snip it here now see how I went through like some holes here press those holes with your fingers to get rid of them okay and if you don't like the stitching on the back, just put a piece of washi over it. I like the stitching on the back, so I'm leaving it by I'm leaving it alone, but I'm showing you how to press out your holes and only see your stitching if you want to see the stitching. And I know that this is overhanging. I did that on purpose. I wanted to. I want it to hang over. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side, but not right now on camera. And sometimes I'll add beads. So I'll go up through here, down through here, up through here, add a bead, down through here, up through here, down through here, up through here, add a bead, down through here. But I didn't want to do that on camera because it's it could be confusing. And now look. It just adds a, just a little bit of something. And I'll do the other side as well so that when it hangs over the page, it looks pretty. Okay? So that's that. And then one more thing is this, which is very easy. So this is book page. It's actually a bookend. So the book was like this. I tore it out of the book like this. Okay? So you can use any size you want. So you're just going to fold it up like this and fold it over like this. Now, Corey Damon is the first one I saw do this. However, I also saw Lori at Enchanted 71 do it. But I'm doing mine a little bit different than they did. What they did was they took a paper clip. I'll just take this one for now. What they did was they took a paper clip. Oh, maybe I won't use that one for now. I'll use this one. Excuse my reach. I'm so sorry. So they took a paper clip. They clipped it like this. 
okay, which you can do. It'll be so sweet. Don't push it all the way down. Close this and close it and glue it. And then you want to close this up and glue it here and glue it here. And then this becomes like a pocket. Okay, I'm going to move you back up. Hold on. I just realized how far down we were. I know my desk is a mess. It's okay. Is that all right? Okay. So, they did this. Put the paper clip on, closed it like this. Well, first they put a you know, bunch of glue to hold that paper clip on. Yeah. And then they closed it up here and this glued down and then closed this over and this became like a little tuck right here okay but when I was watching G Kerr she is just a master of all things paper clips and some of the paper clips I made the other day with her sometime last week or the week before is she made these little fabric covered paper clips so what I did was when I made my fabric paper clips and I can't show you them all because I've already put them somewhere in a box um, with my other paper clips that aren't on my desk. <laughs> um, I mean, I made several different kinds. This one is, um, I made this a long time ago. I just pulled it out for this journal because I noticed it had the same colors in it. So this is just lace covered you know, same way as you make a hidden paper clip. That's all that is. Okay. This one is like the one we made for, I don't remember what project. So I left my paper clip up enough to put a brad through so that I could put my paper, so that I could put my pen upside down. Then I put the brad through before I put the back of the fabric on. Does that make sense? So that these would hang flat. Otherwise, if you put them through the paper clip, they just it just won't hang right. So that's what I did. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am not going to glue this. I am simply going to and I'll decorate this. But I am simply going to now, this is just a little bit wider. My pocket is going to be inside. This is going to be the outside. This is all going to be writing space. This will go over the page because it's just like a hidden paper clip, just like we made before. This will go over the page like this, and now it will slide into a pocket. So now I have writing space. Inside, I'll have a little tuck spot. I'll glue here, glue here. I have a little tuck spot that I can put a few little things in, maybe some words, sentiments, things like that. And then I can paper clip this to a page, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. It's just book page. You can do it with any kind of book page. And collage the book page or do whatever you want. Put a little um, pocket on the back. And there you go. Okay? So that's it for that. I hope that made sense. And is that it? Oh, if you're looking for something to put in a book or, or a journal, this is something I'm adding to my journal. And all I did... I don't want to cover this up because it explains all of these. See, it has numbers, one, two, three, whatever. If you come over here, one, two, three, it tells you every single flower and what the name of it is. It's the Figworth family, Figwort family for anybody that's interested. It's actually the Lavender family, as you can see. And, um, you know, I grow lavender, so anyway, um, I'm going to put this in my book 
and I'm going to make it a flip out so in my journal so that the person can look at the, the plant if they choose and see what it is. Now, once they received the book or the journal, they could cover this up with gesso or, you know, they could maybe cover up part of it, you know, and write here, you know what I mean? You know, cover this whole back. I mean, do whatever they want. But for me, I'd love it if it was in a journal like that. And then I flipped the page and it was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Now, where's number one? Okay, number one. Let me read about number one. That's just me. But the person who's getting the journal might be like, well, I'd really prefer not to have it be like this. I want it to not show. I want to write on it. I mean, they could write a little something up there if they wanted to, but that's just another idea for another thing for your journal. And do we have enough time for me to show you the ephemera? We do not. Let's do that tomorrow or in the next video whenever I get a chance to post that. Probably tomorrow because I'm really tired and I think I probably should lay down before I fall down. So, but I feel better. So that's a good sign. So I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope that you got some good ideas from that video and until I see you again what did we do today let's see what we created we did this so pretty we did this today back a video <laughs> I'm learning people how to do things and then we created this and then this is just a, pa a hidden paper clip, but I put a brad here so that I could add the charm on the bulb pin. And the reason why I put the brad is so that my charms would hang down properly. Otherwise, if you just pinned it through the paper clip, it kind of would swing that way or it would want to anyway. Just an idea if you want something to lay flat or flatter on your page, you could just add a brad and put the pin upside down. See? It's pinned underneath there. So when you take it on and off, it's just going to stay. See? So that's what we've done today. Oh, wait. Where's our swans? Hey there. And we did this. Which I probably shouldn't have put in there yet because it was still a little wet. Oh, thank goodness it is not paper. This one's dry. So yeah, there we go. See how pretty? Now that it's nice and dry, it feels so nice. It's so pretty. Looks like a painting. So there's that one. So much prettier. Is that one and then we made one of these and the person can take everything off and there could be writing space in there but I plan on putting paper in there for writing okay so that's it and then they they want if they want to take this off and open this up longer and you know what have you they have that option so there you go thank you so much for stopping by you guys are great I love you all. I'll try to get to my comments today. By the way, this is a little bird house. And this is a bird cage. I thought of you, Rachel Walters, when I saw that bird cage. Hmm. Okay, folks. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that and got a little bit of something out of my slow stitch. Because I did slow stitch a lot of things. And um, I can't wait to show you. So that'll be in the next video. I'll be showing all the ephemera we've made either on camera or that I've decorated off camera or that I have made off camera. And I'll explain. Okay, until tomorrow, be well, be safe, and God bless y'all. Thanks for visiting. If you're new here, 
you happen to stop by or just find me, um, leave me a comment and let me know if you have a YouTube channel so I can follow you as well. All right. Bye-bye. Love you.